Welcome to Mathematics with Ms. Grade 12, DBE 2022 Final Paper, Paper 1, Question 1. Right, I'm sure most of you will recognize this page. So this is the page for Paper 1, November 2022. It was a three-hour paper, 150 marks. The instructions and information for any paper is very important. You must make sure that you read your instructions and follow them. Like this one for paper one, question uh, number one, this question paper consists of 10 questions. Always make sure that there are 10 questions in your paper. Answer all the questions. Remember, there's no choice here. Number the answers correctly according to the numbering system used in the question paper. Clearly show all calculations, diagrams, graphs, etc. that you have used in determining your answers. Answer will, answers only will not necessarily be awarded full marks. You may, be, you may use an approved scientific calculator, which is of course non-programmable and non-graphical, unless otherwise stated. If necessary, round off answers to two decimal places unless stated otherwise. Diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale. An information sheet with formulae is included at the end of this question paper. Write neatly and legibly. So this is the information or so-called formula sheet. Please take note. This is important that whenever you answer any question, always consult this page to help you to make your problems easier. Right, so this is question one. That is what I'm going to do in this video is to answer question one. So question one consists of 1.1. Where you must solve for x, so that is 1.11, 2, 3, and 4, and then you get 1.2, where you must solve for x and y simultaneously, then 1.3, where you have to use uh, your integers, and then you have to use your exponential laws, and then number 1.4, also more based on exponential laws. So take note, question 1, 25 marks. This is a question where you should be able to score full marks. All right, so let's start with question 1.1. 1.1, so you must solve for x. So given is the factorized equation, 3x minus 6, x plus 2. Now what is important here is to notice that there is already a zero on the right hand side and that is the ideal situation which you would like to have is to have a zero on the right hand side. The same goes for 1.1.2. There's also a zero on the right hand side. So let's go back to 1.1.1. So therefore you can equate each bracket equals to zero. So 3x minus 6 is zero or x plus 2 is 0, then you make x the subject in both, and you get x equals to 2, or x equals to negative 2. So it's one mark for each answer. If you look at 1.1.2, the hint is, if they tell you correct to two decimal places, that means the answers are irrational, that means you must use your quadratic formula, which does appear on the uh, formula sheet. Just remember that what does A, B, and C represent? So A will be the 2, B will be the negative 6, and C will be the 1. Then you do your substitution. Just be careful. B is negative 6 already. So if you put a negative 6 into a negative B, it becomes a positive 6. So please take note of that. Then, of course, the rest can be done on a calculator. And then you remember you must round off to two decimals. So x is 2,82 or x is 0, 0,18. Take note the mark allocation. You get one mark for correct substitution and then one mark for each answer. Right, let's look at 1.13. x squared minus 90 greater than x. So this is an inequality. So please be careful. You cannot treat an inequality like an equality. There is a difference. So the method is, is to 
take the x to the left hand side to remember we always would like to have a zero on the right hand side so please take your x to the left hand side factorize and you get x plus 9 x minus 10 make sure your factors are done correctly then you get your critical values the cv so x is a negative 9 or x is a 10 remember these are not the solutions it's only the critical values or the critical points so plot them on the number line negative 9 and 10 and then you can remember it must be greater than 0 so therefore you test answers less than negative 9 and you test answers greater than 10 and then you will notice that they do satisfy the equation so this is what I call a split answer. So therefore, take note how to present the answers. X is less than negative 9 or X is greater than 10. Or you can use the other method, round brackets, where you say negative infinity, negative 9. Take note, round brackets, because we exclude both infinity and negative 9. And then, of course, the other one is 10 or positive infinity again round brackets because we exclude 10 and positive infinity let's look at 1.1.4 x minus 7 times the square root of x equals to negative 12 now here we're dealing with irrational equations so the idea is is to have the third alone on either the left hand side or the right hand side so in this case we take negative 7 square root x to the right hand side and we take negative 12 to the left hand side that is step number one then we square both sides to get rid of the third so if you square x plus 12 squared you get x squared plus 24 x plus 144 if you square the right hand side then take note 7 squared is 49 and the square root of x squared is x then you treat it like a normal equation you take all your terms to the left hand side factorize or use the formula if you prefer and then you get x16 or x9 or alternatively there are other methods you can use the so-called k method where you say let the square root of x be k but don't forget in the end to to re uh, replace k again with x Look at the mark allocation, isolating the roots for one mark, squaring both sides one mark, standards form one mark, and both answers one mark. Simultaneous equation, solve for x and y. So two equations are given, 2x minus y equals to 2 is the linear equation, and xy equals to 4 is the non-linear, of course it is our hyperbola. So you take your linear equation and you can either make x or y the subject, preferably y, so that we can have no fractions. So therefore y equals to 2x minus 2, substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So you get an x times 2x minus 2 equals to 4, remove the brackets, substitute, write in standard form and factorize or use the formula x minus 2 x plus 1 equals to 0 therefore x is 2 or x is minus 1 substitute these two values into equation 1 to give you the y values y equals to 2 or y equals to negative 4 1.3 show that 2 times 5 to the power n minus 5 to the power n plus 1 plus 5 to the power n plus 2 is even for all positive integers of n so what we do is we first split the middle term 5 to the power n plus 1 into 5 times n that plus times 5 to the power 1. Do the same with 5 to the power n plus 2, split it into 5 to the power n times 5 to the power n. Then your common factor is 5 to the power n and you're left with 2 minus 5 plus 25, which is then 5 to the power n times 22. So there you are. So 2 times... If so, you can take out 2 as a common factor, or because 2 times 11 is 22, and that is the explanation that it is even for all positive integers, or any integer multiplied by an even number will be even. Take note, any integer multiplied by an even number will be even. 
Right, let's look at the following example. Determine the values of x and y if 3 to the power y plus 1 over 32 equals to the square root of 96 to the power of x. So the first step is to use prime numbers like 32 is 2 to the power 5 and the 96 is of course 2 to the power 5 times 3. 2 to the power 5 times 3. So please take note of that. Then, of course, you take 2 to the power 5 up, becomes 2 to the power negative 5. So now we have the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So if you compare the 3, the basis 3, then y plus 1 equals to x over 2. And if you compare the basis 2, then negative 5 equals to 5x over 2. So please take note of that. Then in both cases, solve for x and solve for y. So x is minus 2 and y is also minus 2. Two. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, question one. In the next video, I'll be doing question two. Please don't forget to give me a huge like and subscribe. Remember, subscription is free.